Ah, Cheetos, the most glorious cheese-flavored snack in the world. There's nothing better than getting that dust all over your fingers as you inhale those little puffs. Well, except licking the built-up dust off your fingers once you finish the bag in five minutes before you even realize they're gone. As of 2011, Cheetos are produced, marketed, and distributed under three different PepsiCo operating divisions. PepsiCo American Foods, PepsiCo Europe, and PepsiCo Asia, Middle East, and Africa. PepsiCo also granted the license to the Strauss Elite Company to distribute the Cheeto snack. In 2010, worldwide annual sales of the Cheetos totaled approximately $4 billion, making it the 11th largest PepsiCo brand. Unfortunately, today will not be a tale of good news when it comes to Cheetos. I have some very bad news to share with you about the origins of that little snack. It may ruin your day, I won't lie. I mean, not that it's stopping me. It may be shocking and hard to hear for some viewers. If you're squeamish, turn away now. Everyone who wants to leave gone? Okay. Last warning. Okay. Cheetos were originally made from the waste of corn cow feed. You heard me. Cheetos were a byproduct that came off of filtered cow feed. In the 1930s, there was a family who owned the Flackall Corporation in Beloit, Wisconsin. They had recently patented a new grinder for their livestock feed that, when overflowing and hot enough, would extrude puffed corn from the cracks of the machine. Think of it like popcorn, but no kernels. Following along the stupidity of humanity, as always, when a human seems something new and it looks like it might be edible, someone's going to eat it. Because, you know humans and curiosity well this was no different in the late 30s edward wilson was our crazy man he took home some of the puffed corn pieces deep fried them coated them in delectable wisconsin cheese all that in salt this product was a quick hit and wilson began marketing the treat as corn curls flackall quickly shifted their machines to focus on producing the curl and rebranded to the Adams Corporation after it was sold. You know, to separate themselves from the livestock feed industry. Oh well, I suppose it's not the worst thing that could happen. But I do have a more lighthearted story about Cheetos to tell you. This involves everyone's favorite variety of the snack, flaming Hot Cheetos. Don't worry, I'm not gonna ruin these for anyone. It's a good story, just stick with me. In 1978, Frito-Lay had a malfunction in their systems that caused cheese dust that goes on Cheetos. Which might I add, that dust is officially called Cheetle? What? Cheetle? That was the best you could come up with Cheetos? What kind of weird shit? Never mind. Anyway, the dust wasn't going on them. A janitor of the warehouse, Richard Montanez, ask if he could take some of the unseasoned puffs home. Once he was approved, he took them home and seasoned them with spices reminiscent of Mexican street corn. They were a quick hit with his friends and family and they encouraged him to pitch the idea to sell them. Richard went all the way to Frito-Lay's parent company, PepsiCo, and pitched the idea. And since their debut in the 90s, they have been a huge hit worldwide. Now this is the crazy part. This man was a janitor when he started out, but now, because of that one thing that he did, Richard is now the vice president of PepsiCo. Isn't that crazy? But it's a really nice, heartwarming story to balance out the grossness of the other one. You know, a little bit of janitor, a little bit of cow feed. It's a typical Tuesday. Just keep that in mind next time you see a bag of Cheetos. Think about that before you open them up and start to dig into them. Remember that what you're eating is essentially cow feed. Now go and ruin someone else's day with that information I've just shared with you. For Morehead State, this is Erica Johnson.